My name is Rob Todd, and I'm from Allagash Brewing Company. We're located in Portland, Maine, a long way away, uh, and we're excited to be here. It's not my first trip here, but it never gets old. It's a, it's a beautiful place to come, and we're honored to be able to pour our beer here today. This is our second quintessence, so we were here in 2014, the first time which was amazing. It was a uh, very, very fun day. And we're back, we're honored to be back. It was supposed to be two years ago, but because of COVID, it got delayed a little. And uh, we brought four beers. I'm gonna try to get this uh, right, because uh, this is not my first beer today. Uh, but we brought our Cool Ship Palm. Uh, that's a spontaneously fermented beer that we make, that we age on uh, apples. Uh, we brought our Cool Ship Resurgum, which is a blend of three different spontaneously fermented beers, uh, similar to a Goose. We don't call it Goose, just out of respect for the Belgian brewers. Uh, but it's uh, brewed in the style of the Goose. Uh, we also brought the Allagash Curio, which is a triple style beer that's aged in uh, bourbon barrels. Um, and then the final one that we have, I forget the name of it, but it's uh, made from honeyberry. Oh, it's the honey um, yeah, yeah, which is uh, a very interesting fruit. It's grown in the northern cooler climates. Actually, that's what I'm drinking right here. Excellent, yes, so am I. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, for you, uh, you know, we talk about this American evolving style. It's it's uh, spontaneously fermented. It's out of respect. You know, the girl's name is now trying to keep it in the pato land. What what would you say about the American style, yours and others? Well, we we try to brew ours very true to style. Uh, like I said, we don't out of respect for the Belgian brewers, we don't use words like lambic. Uh, goose, Frambois, um, we, we don't use those names, um, but we brew the, the beer very true to style, to the Belgian tradition, and um, our relationship at Allagash uh, goes back a long way with, with Cantillon. We've been good friends for at least 15 years. I actually came here for the first time uh, 23 years ago on my honeymoon, actually. Um, so I've, I've been up here many, many times. It's just a very special place for me and a special place for Allagash and just an amazing re relationship. Um, but so just with that relationship, we've been able to, to share um, a lot of uh, brewing practices uh, with, with Cantillon and they've been a big help in us uh, just working to refine our beers. And tell me the secret. Are the yeasts different there uh, than here? Or yeah. I don't know if there's one secret, but yeah, they're, they're absolutely different. And we can brew at slightly different times of year. Here, they can brew throughout the entire winter. Uh, back in Portland, Maine, where the climate gets much colder in the middle of the winter, we can only brew just before winter. Usually we can brew uh, October, November, December, and then we have to uh, stop brewing January, February, and then late March we can usually brew again. But it, it just gets too it gets too cold in the middle of the winter, and then just like here in the summer, it's too warm to brew. Um, but we have some nice three month periods where we can brew. And do you think that makes a difference in style, like a terroir? Is there a terroir? I think, in I think absolutely. Yeah, you know where 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 you brew these beers makes a difference. What time of year you brew the beers make a difference. The barrel you put it in makes a difference. Uh, so for sh for sure, they're they're different. And uh, how long have you been going at this as a commercial brewer? Uh, I started Allagash in 1995. I started building it in 1994. Started uh, making beer. We started with a Belgian style wheat beer in 1995, and uh, we've been brewing the spontaneously fermented beer since 2007. Is there a difficulty in getting the barrels that you need, or do you think you branch out into no. completely? Because, you know, in the French wine industry, which I yeah. used to cover, you know, American oak or French yeah. oak, uh, is there that kind of, you know, attention to detail? Of course there is. There but is the attention to detail for sure, but we can very easily source barrels from Europe uh, or from the U.S. for barrels. So we have sources. We can absolutely get French wine barrels. 
We've no gotten problem. wine barrels from Spain, from Portugal, from California, so we can get them from lots of different sources. And what percentage are you say the spontaneous fermented uh, beers make up of your total production? Extremely small, less, uh, far under 1%. Our total production is about 130,000 barrels a year, which is maybe 140,000 hectoliters. Most of it, it, it's all Belgian style. Most of it is a traditional Belgian style wheat beer. Um, but the spontaneous beer is very small. Important part of our culture, but very small percentage of our production. Do you think Americans' tastes are evolving? To, I know there's a cult thing, people fly over here to come, but it's a small market. Is, is it for these kind of, or is it growing? Do you see? I don't know if it's growing, uh, but there are absolutely a lot of Americans that have an appreciation for these beers. And there's a lot of Americans here today. And do you find uh, increasing competition then, even though it's a small percentage of your makeup for that market? Um, I haven't thought of it, really. I, I think we make such a small amount that uh, what we make, we, we sell. Yeah, yeah. And it's more of a camaraderie than competition. And you're, you're known worldwide, of course, for your beers. Where do you see Allagash going then? In the direction of after COVID, you had markets shut down. Yeah. You're now uh, on the path to getting a ca good clash flow going again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've always grown just a little bit each year, incremental, careful, thoughtful growth, and we plan to continue doing that. We, we just sell beer in the U.S. now, except for just maybe a little, little bit of export, but we're only in 18 states, so. I think there's more states to open in the U.S. and we'll still do a little bit of export and keep doing events like this. Overseas. And lastly, here's sorry, go ahead. Oh no, that's it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, here's the 20. You know, everybody always been saying for years there's going to be a crash out or shake out to the market. Do you think it's happened already with COVID, or do you? Th I boy, that that is the question. Uh, I you know the breweries keep opening. In the U.S., when I started in the U.S., there were maybe three or four hundred breweries. Ten years ago, there was maybe four thousand. Today, there's nine thousand. More have opened during COVID. Uh, you know, there's nine thousand now in the U.S., so they seem to Sky's keep opening. <laughs> Sky's the limit, apparently. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks so much for talking to the beer idiots. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having lovely me. beer. Thank you. Thank you.